Now, I tend to look at everything as a bit of a bell curve. You've got, you know, the people on one end here, you've got the big bell, you've got the folks on the other end. I consider myself at the good end of the bell curve uh, because uh, I was diagnosed when I was six months old. So what had happened was I uh, come from uh, Maryland, a uh, lovely American miniature there where everything is happy. We don't have uh, fire season as, uh, as we were talking about earlier. Uh, and there's only so much flooding. It's just good. And we got some good hospitals there. Uh, not as good as New York, but you know, they're pretty good. Um, but I, uh, at about six months of age, um, had some sort of a respiratory infection, and it was getting worse, and it was getting worse, and it was just going downhill really quickly, and so I uh, had a uh, pediatrician who said, you know what, I got a bad feeling about this. Let's get, let's get him over to Johns Hopkins, which is just a quick ride away. Um, great thing that they did, because I just started going downhill really fast, and basically within uh, a very short time of getting there, uh, they had to intubate me and go through the whole process. Uh, I had uh, what was then a form of pneumonia, uh, pneumocystis, uh, which was pretty much unheard of in children. Uh, and again, these are this is 1978. This is pre-HIV. Uh, you know, to for a young person to get something like pneumocystis meant really only one thing: that they had an immune deficiency, most likely. Uh, now, back in those days. Uh, there were, again, a very small number described, and uh, to be a child with something like this, uh, the first thing that came to mind was severe combined immune deficiency. And some of the people here in the audience are, are old enough, some are not, uh, to remember David Vetter, the boy in the plastic bubble. Uh, he was one of ours. He had severe combined immune deficiency. Uh, and actually, uh, the 35th anniversary of his passing uh, was uh, just last Friday. His mother is, uh, is a dear friend and is part of our board of trustees. And um, you know, for many, many years and decades, David was a real face uh, and helped people to understand primary immunodeficiency. Um, and the reason I say all this is because uh, you know, SCID is, has always been a good pathway for exploration and understanding. It's a great test run for all of the other diagnoses that are under this umbrella. Um, it is severe. Uh, it shows up, um, you know, and there's really no mistaking it. Uh, and then you have to get onto a path for treatment, uh, or you will not survive. It is uniformly fatal. Uh, and really, since David's time, and it was in his time that bone marrow transplantation uh, became really uh, available and, uh, and, and a possibility uh, for doing something akin to a cure for SCID. Now, of course, there are not too many true cures out there, but uh, you know, it gives you, as was said, a runway, if nothing else. Now, back then, they didn't know it was a runway. The thought was, you're going to be good to go, and that's going to be great. And, and it certainly is better than any other option that is out there.